Now we'll talk about multiplying integers. You need to be able to multiply numbers regardless of their sign, whether they're positive or negative. And the rules for multiplying integers are really simple. Multiplying two positive numbers results in a positive number. Multiplying two negative numbers also results in a positive number. And multiplying a positive and a negative, and it doesn't matter which one comes first, as long as one is positive and one is negative, the result will be a negative number. Another way to state those same ideas would be to say that if both of the numbers have the same sign, okay, if they're both positive or both negative, then the result is a positive number. If the numbers have opposite signs, one positive and one negative, then the result is a negative number. Now with that in mind, we should be able to solve these problems. 5 times 3 is obviously 15. Negative 5 times 3, well, one of them is negative, so the result will be negative. We have negative 15 for an answer. 5 times negative 3 also gives us negative 15 for an answer, because one of the numbers was negative and one was positive. In this last example, negative 5 times negative 3, they're both negative. Multiplying two negative numbers gives us a positive number for an answer, positive 15. These ideas should make sense if you think of the negative sign as meaning opposite. So if you have negative 5 times 3, you can think of that as meaning the opposite of 5 times 3, as if you had parentheses there. The opposite of 5 times 3. And 5 times 3 is clearly 15, and the opposite of that is negative 15. Or if you had two negative signs like this, negative 5 times negative 3, since everything here is multiplied together, you could just think of rearranging these things. You could think of putting the negative signs first. The opposite of the opposite of 5 times 3. So you could, in your mind, rewrite it like this. Negative, negative, 5 times 3. And the 5 times 3 there gives us a 15. The opposite of that is negative 15. And the opposite of that is positive 15. So we see two negative numbers multiplying together to give us a positive number. A positive and a negative multiplying to give us a negative number. And that should make sense if you think of the negative sign as meaning opposite. So think about the negative sign in these examples. Negative, negative 5. If you think of that as the opposite of the opposite of 5, well it's 5 or the opposite of negative 5. If you have an additional negative sign, negative, negative, negative 5, like that, so I have a, an additional layer of parentheses in there nested, this comes out to negative 5. So I have here negative 5. The opposite of that is positive 5, and the opposite of that is negative 5. If I have a fourth negative sign, if I have negative, 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 negative 5, well, this is negative 5 right here. The opposite of that is positive 5. The opposite of that is negative 5. The opposite of that is positive 5. So what we see is that an even number of negative signs, if I have two negative signs or four negative signs, or if I had six or eight or 10 or 12 and so on, an even number of negative signs will always cancel out, leaving me with a positive result. If I have an odd number of negative signs, then I can always break that up into an even number of negative signs plus one left over. And the even number of negative signs will cancel each other out, and the one left over will make my result negative. So an odd number of negative signs, when everything's multiplied, is the same as having a single negative sign. This concept about multiple negative signs applies to numbers that are multiplied together. 
Look at this first example. Negative 2 times negative 5 times negative 3. Let's just ignore the negative signs for a minute and look at the numbers. 2, 5, and 3. We can multiply those in our head pretty easily. The 2 times 5 is 10, and the 3 uh, would give us 10 times 3, which would be 30. So then we look here, and I notice that there are 1, 2, 3 negative signs. And I know that 3 negative signs will give me a negative answer. So my answer is negative 30. In this next example, I have four negative signs. So I know my answer is going to be positive. An even number of negative signs multiplied together will cancel each other out. So I just need to multiply 8 times 5 times 2 times 3, and that will be my answer. And I can do this in my head also if I'm just a little bit clever here. 8 times 5 is 40, and 2 times 3 is 6. So I can just multiply 40 times 6, and that gives me 240. And because I had an even number of negative signs there, my result is positive.